Hold on, y'all. Alright, what's going down, y'all? So, I just did this video, but my camera is acting fugazi. So, um, I'm about to give y'all this for this is going to be now the third time. Um, uh, and this breaking news just came to me from one of the T-subs, and it's about um, James Timothy Norman. And if y'all don't know who James Timothy Norman is, it's Tim from uh, Welcome to Sweetie Pass. Tim, him right there. And he has officially been charged with in connection of a murder for hire plot on his nephew, Andre uh, Montgomery. For those of y'all who doesn't know, when the show was still airing, Welcome to Sweetie Pass on OWN, um, Miss Robbie took in her nephew, Andre. I believe his mother was on drugs or something like that. And he was, you know, in and out of trouble. And she basically bought him in, took him in. Gave him a job. He was able to graduate high school and this, that, that, and this. And he was killed while the show was filming. He was killed. Um, so that's who he is. That's just a little backdrop for those of you all who might not remember. So I'm going to read to y'all what WLB uh, News Channel 3 on Yo Sad had to say. Um, Sweetie Pie's owner charged with conspiracy and alleged murder for hire plot and the death of his nephew. It says in Madison County, Mississippi, James Timothy Norman, owner of Sweetie Pass Restaurant, has been arrested on federal charges and is currently being held in the Madison County Detention Center. Norman was charged with conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities, in parentheses, a cell phone, in the in the community in the commission of a murder for hire, resulting in death. According to the complaint, Norman Terica Ellis and others others conspired to commit a murder for hire in exchange for money. Federal authorities allege that in 2014, Norman obtained a $450,000 life insurance policy on his 18-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery. Norman was the sole beneficiary. In the days leading up to Montgomery's murder, Ellis told Montgomery that she was coming to St. Louis. On March 13, 2016, the day before Montgomery's murder, Norman flew to St. Louis, Missouri from his home in Los Angeles, California. On March 14, 2016, Ellis and Norman communicated using temporary phones activated that day. Ellis also used the temporary phone to communicate with Montgomery and learn his location. Immediately after learning Montgomery's location, Ellis placed a call to Norman. Around 8 p.m. that same day, Montgomery was shot and killed. Ellis' phone location information places her in the area of the murder at the time of the shooting. Immediately following Montgomery's murder, Ellis placed a call to Norman and then began traveling to Memphis, Tennessee. In the days after the murder, Ellis deposited over $9,000 in cash into various bank accounts. On March 21st, 2016, Norman contacted the life insurance policy, the life insurance company, in an attempt to collect on the life insurance policy he had obtained on his nephew. Terica Ellis was also charged by the complaint with conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities and the commission of murder for hire, resulting in death. The St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department Homicide Section and Federal Bureau of Investigation are investigating these charges. Y'all, it is really sad, y'all. And, and, and it just goes to show it's a cold damn world out here and you can't trust nobody, not even family. Um, like I said before, this young man already had a hard life and he finally had somebody to come into his life to really try to do something to make a change. And, and then the fact that, you know, his uncle of all people turns on him for the insurance money, girl, girl, he pulled the whole rich white woman stunt on us, child. He watched way too much ID 2020. I am homicide, uh, you know, um, betrayed, snapped. You know, fatal vows, you know, on the case for Paula Zant, all of them, like, first 48. He watched way too much of that. And, and, like, and what kills me is he had three restaurants under his belt that I'm more than sure was doing good, if not good, at least okay enough that you did not have to do a whole murder for hire on your nephew. Like, why Andre? 
not to say that it would have been any better, but you know, had it been anybody else, you know, you st you did the time, did the crime, you would have had to do the time. But the fact that you chose family, you know what I'm saying? It, it really makes you think like the, the the mental of some people. And he already been a jailbird. Like they already talked about how he already done with the jail years ago for doing God knows what to Lord knows who. Now he go on ahead and add murder to it. Expect, not only that, murder of a family member. Like I know this is killing Miss Robbie because the death of the nephew already damn near had her with one foot in the grave. Now you have to deal, go through life knowing that not only was your nephew killed, but it was your son that killed him for the insurance money. Like, it's... I, I feel bad for Miss Robbie, y'all. Like, I really do. Like, I, I feel really bad for Miss Robbie. I feel bad for everybody involved. But the, 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 the one person that I really, really, truly feel bad for is Tim Jr., because now you have to walk around, this kid has to walk around with the fact of his daddy being a murderer of one of his family members for the insurance money. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that, that shit is going to follow that kid. No matter how old he gets, no matter where he go in life, that will always follow behind that damn boy. And it's just a damn shame that Tim was so selfish enough to take not only take a life, but not think of the other lives that are going to be affected and altered by his actions. Um, I, for one, don't believe in the death penalty, but I do believe he needs to be strapped down to that good gurney and get that good needle inserted in his arm. And we could just be done with him. Like, that's just how I feel. I never saw it for Tim. I never liked Tim. I always thought he was a creep. I always felt like he was weird. And this just furthermore proved why I just never saw it for Tim. Ever. I never saw it for Tim. I always felt like there was something about him that just couldn't be trusted. That was completely freaking sneaky. And now I see what it is. Now I see what it is. And it goes to show that money is the root of all evil. Money overpowers everything, including family ties. Um with what they got going on around there. Um this other girl, Terrica Ellis, and then they said it was others. So who are the others? Who are the others? Because y'all just, listen, y'all only gave him a Terrica. That's a couple. Who are the others? You named him a Terrica. Why y'all ain't named the other people? That's how I feel. And I want to know who told. Like, it's a whole bunch about this story that I'm really going to have to, like, really dig, dig, dig deep into. Because I just have so many questions of who all knew, who all was involved, and why only two people is about to take the rap for it. But... Y'all, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to give you. Let's get the discussion popping. Let it. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know y'all thoughts. Let me know how y'all feel. Those of you all who have kids, please make sure you tell them you love them. Check up on the people in your family. Check up on your strong friends, your weak friends, your in-between friends. Girl, check up on them because you never know what people got going on in their head with their mental or anything like that. But um, yeah, I'm going to talk to y'all later, girl. Bye. What you giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business